There are a lot of questions this morning over the sudden death of Canute, the world's most famous polar bear. CBS News correspondent and resident veterinarian Dr. Debbie Turner-Bell is with us with more on this this morning. Dr. Good morning, Mark. Chris. Well, there's no question that Canute was adorable, but animal rights activists have always questioned his quality of life, and now everyone is questioning why he died. The polar bear exhibit at the Berlin Zoo stood empty Sunday afternoon following the death of its most famous resident, Canute. The beloved polar bear was in his enclosure Saturday afternoon when he suddenly collapsed in front of more than 600 visitors. He was only four years old. This zookeeper says they were all shot. One moment he was in the water and the next he was dead. He said Canute wasn't sick and they don't know why he died. Canute captured the hearts of millions around the world in 2007 when as a cub his mother rejected him, leaving him in the hands of zookeepers. The only polar bear to ever be raised by humans, Canute became an instant sensation with three million visitors a year. His name is Canute. His own feature film and even a cover shot on Vanity Fair magazine. The adorable cub grew attached to his human caretakers, but as he got older and bigger, he became too large and dangerous to interact with human beings, prompting critics to speculate he was lonely and depressed. We visited Canute in 2008 and asked his keepers then if he was living in a healthy environment. He is not uh, addicted to humans and he is not missing uh, the keepers and he is very um, happy with the situation. As visitors mourn the loss of the adorable bear and veterinarians prepare for a necropsy, the animal version of an autopsy, animal rights activists are placing blame on the zoo. Knut was observed um, displaying behaviors that indicated that he had gone mad from confinement. He paced constantly and swayed. It was, it was obvious to you know, anyone who knew what to look for that captivity was, was driving him insane. Considering polar bears typically live up to 20 or 30 years in captivity, no matter what the reason behind Canute's death, one thing is clear, it came too soon. After today's necropsy, there may be some preliminary findings of the cause of Canute's death if it was a structural de uh, defect of his anatomy, like a uh, heart abnormality, but it could be days or even weeks, Christy, uh, Chris, before a determination is and, made. And this is really surprising, because like you said, there are normal life expectancy in captivity, 20 to in 30 years. In captivity, 20 is... up to 30 years. And so for a young, hardy bear, and all indications are that he was healthy, that his behavior was in fact normal, mm -hmm. and he had reached sort of his teenage years, his prime, so he should not have been uh, a candidate to die. When they're young, they're vulnerable to death, but he had, re he had gotten past that point. Like we heard from the one uh, young lady in the piece there, these animal rights activists who feel that Maybe the treatment there, living in captivity, is not good for these animals. You were out there in Berlin like we saw. What did you think? I absolutely was, and I saw him, and he seemed to be a normal, healthy, young bear. I didn't see the behavior that they are talking about. In fact, he mugged for the, the visitors that were there whenever there were people there. He came up, he waved, he stood up, he swam in the pool to get as close to them as possible. Very curious. Uh, so it's unlikely that his circumstances, being in captivity, is the reason for his death. Of of course, we won't know until they actually do the post postmortem yeah. and get the results back. Uh, as far as how long that takes, is it similar to an autopsy with human beings? As far as the uh, the expeditious way in which you can kind yes, of yes, what results? the veterinarians are going to do, it's almost exactly like an autopsy for human beings. They're going to take samples of of tissue. They're going to take blood samples. They'll test for toxicities. They'll look for structural defects, yeah. and you know, hopefully, we'll know something. Dr. Debbie Turner Bell, thank you. Mm -hmm.